more on the Russian market. Our guest today is Chris Weifa, chief strategist for Eurosub Capital, one of Russia's largest financial companies. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, are investors still quite cautious about investing in Russia? That's just a lack of transparency and visibility. Well, it's <clears throat> investors certainly are cautious. We can see that from the the, the fund flow data to, to investors had been very underweight Russia, of course, after the crisis, and have now come back to a, just a neutral position. But they're they're more concerned about the oil price. They're more concerned about global growth, the demand for commodities. Um, that's what's keeping the caution in the story, say, rather than anything else. Would you say that the uh, Russian stock market is held hostage to the global recovery story? Isn't Russia facing a correction as investors get concerned about the global pickup? Yeah, this, uh, Russia is a high beta play within global markets. Uh, we saw that last year where, where, you know, on global recovery, Russia's markets was up, as you say, over 100 percent. And this year, as global recovery is continuing, Russia is also outperforming. So if we were to run into, say, a, a double dip, a, sort of a W-type uh, scenario that some people fear, then, yeah, we definitely would see that reflected in Russia sort of uh, almost quicker than any other market. So it's very dependent on the oil price and it's very dependent on, on Chinese demand and pricing for, for, for commodities. I, I just wondered, we know the external factors that mm -hmm. could come into play in the Russian market. What about uh, any internal factors? What's the biggest risk uh, for investors to look at based on internal factors in Russia right well, now? Well, we're, we're actually looking at uh, the Russian economy now in a recovery phase. It's, to some extent, it's about 12 months behind everybody else. And, you know, I think it's fair to say that the government did sort of hold back last year, waiting to see just how strong would be global recovery, how much money it would have to spend, basically, from, from, from oil revenue. So we're now seeing stimulus measures being applied to the economy, as I say, later than everybody else, and we are expecting, therefore, to see a broadening out of the economy. In terms of the risk, therefore, is that, you know, if there is a global slowdown, then we believe the government would slow down its stimulus programs. It's, it's very concerned about preserving capital, about preserving its revenues, not eating into its, its savings, as, as it were. So the big risk is that if, 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 there, if there was some external contagion, it would just simply slow down the stimulus spending, and we get a slower rate of growth than, than we're expecting. Uh, Euro SIB is forecasting GDP growth of 5.5% this year after last year's 8% slump. So that's the main risk is that it just we get slower recovery. How are valuations looking? Seems like they're more cheaply rated than the peers in other emerging markets. Yeah, if you look at a snapshot, Russia is very cheap. But of course, you've got to remember that about 50% of the market is represented by oil and gas stocks. And of course, oil and gas shares are cheaply rated around the world. If you exclude the oil and gas shares, then today, or on a trailing earnings basis, Russia is roughly equally rated with uh, GEM peers. But we're expecting stronger earnings growth to come through later this year and in 2011, particularly on the domestic sectors, infrastructure stories, etc. So if you look at 2011, ex oil and gas, Russia is about a third cheaper. So the strong earnings growth is a big part of the story. And Chris, what about corporate governance? I was in Moscow about a year and a half ago, just uh, around the time of the Lehman crisis. So obviously, uh, and at the time I was there, I was given a book uh, in English, translated to English. It was sort of a government academia joint venture uh, uh, type study on, on, on the improvement of corporate governance in mm. Russia. I think that took a back seat during the crisis. Uh, what's the status of that right now? Is that, that's been a major barrier for foreign investors to come in in the past. Yeah, absolutely right. The perception of poor corporate governance has been an issue. Um, look, I think now now we can see that post-crisis, uh, as it were, that uh, there, there's now a, a, a greater level, a greater momentum, as it were, to try and improve Russia's investment image, both from the government and companies. I mean, everybody understands that there's a direct link between the value of your company, the value of your shares, how investors rate the, the, the country, and their perception of risk, the perception of corporate governance. So we're actually seeing, you know, some real concrete steps being taken by companies to improve transparency, to improve dialogue with, with, with investors. So you're fairly comfortable. So we're, we're actually, yeah, we're, we're certainly a lot more hopeful. And of course, it is worth pointing this week, the Russian government is engaged in a roadshow to market its first ever Eurobond issue. Sorry, the first one since the 1998 default. Now, that's, if you like, a sign of, of, of corporate governance, of, of a sign that the government is trying to improve its uh, relationship with investors. They don't need the money. At the current oil price, the budget is getting in over $5 billion a month more than it expected. But they're, 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 they're issuing this bond as part of this effort to try and improve Russia's relationship with investors to become more transparent. And we're seeing that at the corporate level as well. Great.
So definitely, Chris, if we want to play Russia, Russia, if we want to uh, play Russia, Chris, where are the best opportunities? Okay, domestic. So year to date, the, the market has been led by by companies that are exposed to the China story, as it were, it's, it's steel, coal, mining, etc. But we believe that investors should be rotating into into domestic sectors, those companies that will benefit from the broadening of the economy for in, in later this year and next year. Infrastructure stories are certainly the long term plays. Russia needs to spend a lot of money improving its roads, its electricity, its ports, etc. So infrastructure is definitely the big long term story in Russia. Consumer stories and domestics, we believe, will, will lead the market later this year and next year.